is page 10. Thank you guys for checking in. We're in lesson one, activity one. Well, now we're gonna do activity two today. We've been talking about understanding the characteristics of graphs and really talking about dependent and independent quantities and how those show up on a graph. So let's take a look at page 10. And by the way, in order to do page 10, you have to have done activity one, which was all of our analysis of the different graphs, the sorts of information that we saw. So if you're jumping into this video now, welcome. I'm glad you're here, but you should probably go back and take a look at the previous videos, page five, six, seven, eight, nine. And for today, page 10. So let's look at it. We have in our mathematics, we have some observations that need to be made about the graphs that we analyzed in the previous activity, in the previous videos. And so some things that I want you to observe, what are some similarities that you notice about the graphs? And so give me a minute to kind of study them with you. Um, on page eight, there was a graph that rose, uh, it fell. Uh, we identified its independent and dependent quantities and put that information on the graph. Um, in this graph, we have the graph kind of starting off to the left side of the graph and then climbing and it flattens out. Uh, still, the independent quantity is on the x-axis and the dependent quantity is on the y-axis. Um, on the other side, we had kind of a similar graph with a little bit of that continuous. Uh, that's a good word. That's a good math word that, that belongs on the wall, continuous. Still, we put independent quantity on the x-axis and dependent quantity on the y-axis. And that might actually happen in the majority of our graphs, that the independent quantity seems to show up as our x-axis label, and dependent quantity is our y-axis label. That's actually, that's actually the first observation. In all of the graphs, the dependent quantity is on the y-axis, and the independent quantity is labeled on the x-axis. and then dependent on the y. Of course, at any time you see me writing, you could skip ahead. Uh, I'll try to be able to talk through some of it, but I wanna make sure you have a chance to also stop, pause, and write, and then skip forward a little bit. You know, Use the way that you process these videos to your advantage. Okay, one other observation that I noticed, and I said that math word because I was reminded of it, this is a continuous line. This is a continuous curve. This is continuous, although it has corners, it's still continuous on its entire length of the line. To be continuous means there's no gaps, jumps, um, dotted like breaks in between. And so all of our graphs from activity one were also continuous. All of the graphs were continuous. And that's such a good word. I'm going to actually highlight it because I think I know what my next word for the word wall is, that you need to know the difference between what we say is a continuous curve or, um, well, I'll, I'll leave it for when the other word pops up, but there's a word for not continuous. What differences do you notice in the graphs? And maybe this is one where we need to kind of think about it. Uh, this graph has a corner. Uh, this graph is smooth. So there are no corners. Um, this graph is smooth. It has a bend. It's rising and then it's falling. So there's some rise. Again, all the, the times when we read graphs, it's always from left to right. So when you start on the left side of the graph and then you read to the right side of the graph, we want to be able to uh, analyze, is the graph rising or is the graph falling from left to right? And in this problem, as the graph is moving from left to right, it's rising and then falling together. That means there's a maximum right there, another good math word. Uh, 
Um, we have a continuous straight line. It's continuous, it's a straight line. And because it's a straight line, we also call that a constant rate of change. I know it's a constant rate of change because think of what you did in, in your middle school math classes. You would make these little slope triangles and then you would analyze the rate of change. And if the rate of change was ever different, then we would say it wasn't constant, but we have constant rate of change. Some of the graphs are increasing or decreasing or both. Uh, some of the graphs have corners. Some are smooth graphs. Um, some of the graphs have an x uh, have a maximum. Okay. So there's other observations here. What other things do you notice that are different between the graphs? I mean, they're definitely not all the same. We have variations in the graphs, otherwise the pictures would be boring and they'd be like identically matching and there'd be nothing fun and fresh to talk about with that. But in our pictures, this class is about talking about that difference between the graph of one quantity relationship, uh, independent, dependent quantities, versus another and well, what, what can you do with those? Can we like make a decision? Can we judge uh, a choice based upon that information? Let's try number three. How did you label the independent and dependent quantities in each graph? And honestly, in every single graph, independent quantity went on the x-axis, dependent quantity went on the y-axis. So I labeled the x-axis with the independent quantity. and I labeled the y-axis with the dependent quantity. Okay, uh, I, we're ready to go to number four. Number four says, how do we analyze the graph moving from left to right? And that's what I mean. When you look at a graph, we wanna look at how that graph is, um, let me kind of side up right there. So as we work from left to right, what's happening to the graph? And we know a graph is increasing if from the left side of the graph, it grows to a higher number as it goes to the right side of the graph. So some graphs are increasing some graphs are decreasing. Let me get an increasing graph, by the way. Uh, this one has a lot of increasing features. At some point, it's constant. So we're gonna maybe address that that's a constant change. But until we get to that point, some graphs are decreasing. Some graphs are both decreasing and increasing. Some are constant. And by constant, I do mean that uh, there is a flat curve. Because what I'm also about to say in my last sentence, I haven't written down yet on this, and we're getting to the end of the video, like you can tell as you look on the bottom of the screen. So we also have one more. To be a constant graph means to be a flat line from left to right. But there's also a description, some graphs have a constant rate of change. Now the difference between just a graph being constant, that also has a rate of change of zero. So I guess it does have a constant rate of change because a flat line graph is not rising or falling, no increase or decrease, it's totally flat. So in that section, its rate of change is zero. There's no change as the graph moves from left to right. But to have a constant rate of change means the graph is growing or decreasing, increasing or decreasing, in better words, linearly. And this is my favorite example that I've already talked about in this video. The graph is decreasing constantly. There's no curve to it. It's just an arrow straight in one direction. And so we're gonna look at these graphs first 
But definitely by the end of the year, we'll talk about these exponential graphs. We'll talk about these quadratic graphs. Here's another example of a quadratic graph. This is a piecewise graph made of linear functions. This is another piecewise graph made of linear functions. And this is also an exponential. And those are the main types of graphs that we're going to study. There was one more. It's actually on the back of this one. This is an absolute value graph. And I would recommend that we do go back and add those, maybe for a future video. But the point is, all of these graphs can be analyzed, can be studied. We can attach some characteristic description to them and make them make meaning for us. That has been page 10. Of course, page 11 is next. We are almost wrapped up with our first lesson of Algebra 1, Topic 1, Module 1, Lesson 1. So I thank you for being here for the journey, and I appreciate your attention and your effort. It's going to pay off in the end. Keep growing and learning, and I'll see you in the next episode.